Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jared Brown and I'm a welding instructor uh, at the Lincoln Tech Denver campus. Uh, as we all adjust to this coronavirus pandemic that is happening, um, we've all been forced to teach and then learn in uh, new ways. This uh, new remote learning model that, that all of us have had to uh, take on uh, and adapt to. Um, is something that we all have to deal with right now. So we're trying to put together short videos uh, that relate to what you will learn during your uh, program while at Lincoln Tech, regardless of campus. Today I would like to take the opportunity to, to walk you through a really normal run-of-the-mill uh, gas metal arc GMA MIG machine. Uh, the one that I have right here is a Millermatic 212 auto set. This is kind of a middle of the ground uh, gas metal arc GMA MIG machine. Um, use kind of light duty, light to medium duty. Um, we don't have a lot of heat. There doesn't, we don't have a, a ton of voltage. About 22 volts is about the max you're going to get out of this machine. Um, this machine in particular, I can weld up to 3 8 plate in one pass. Uh, so really good for uh, home hobbyist uh, fabrication for furniture, terrain park features for, uh, for snowboarding, automotive, um, things like that, but but anything really really heavy structural uh, this one's not going to get the heat for the penetration um, This here machine is a short circuit transfer process machine and when I say short circuit When the electrode or the wire comes out of our gun every time that wire touches uh, the, the workpiece, the metal that we're welding, it creates a short circuit. That sh short circuit heats up the electrode, the electrode in essence uh, melts off and then is deposited into the weld. Uh, this happens 20 to 2,000 times a second, kind of depending on your wire speed. Um, that is why the, it's very distinctive, the sound with a short circuit machine. A lot of people will, will, will say that it sounds like frying bacon or, or an egg hitting a, a frying pan, something like that. It has that real crackle. Um, the other process is globular process. That's kind of when it just, exactly like it sounds, it globular, globularly um, just, just melts and drops off. And then we have the spray transfers, and that's when the electrode, exactly what it says, it sprays off. It never touches uh, the workpiece. It just, the amount of heat that's involved, it just fans out and sprays. Um, that's used for a lot thicker steel when you need really, really good penetration and uh, you need a, a, a lot of weld material deposited. So, uh, but this machine here, like I said, short circuit process, great machine. Um, come your, your way around it. Uh, this is a gas shielded machine. As long as we're running just regular gas metal arc welding with hard wire, we are going to use a shielding gas. Uh, I'm using a 7525 shielding gas. It's 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. That is pretty much the industry standard for short circuit transfer. Um, we have our regulator. We have a high pressure gauge and a low pressure gauge. My high pressure gauge here tells me what I have inside of my cylinder as far as, uh, you know, if I'm full or if I'm empty. And then I have my low pressure gauge. My low pressure gauge is telling me once my uh, gas comes through my cylinder, comes through my valve and my regulator, I can use my adjusting screw here to adjust that low pressure uh, to get the CFM or cubic feet an hour of gas flow that I want for short circuit transfer. Uh, for this particular machine, for 035 hardwire that I'm running, uh, I like to run about 25 uh, CFH. And so easily I would dial this in right um, and I would see, I would be able to adjust my gauge here um, actually while I'm pulling the trigger on the machine. And then when I go to shut everything down, I back this all the way off. That being said, uh, the next thing I want to bring your attention to on this machine would be... Up here. The first thing is going to be my cable, also known as a whip. That's kind of in the industry. That's probably what you're, going to, what you're going to hear it called the most. Um, kind of sl a slang term for, for your MIG gun and your cable attaching your machine. There's a liner inside of this that allows your electrode or your wire to be pushed through uh, seamlessly without it binding up catching. Um, that being said, these liners can uh, have a lot of wear and tear. Dirt and debris can find their way into uh, the cabinet here, into the liner. Uh, so they do get replaced, but if they're taken care of, if you uh, pr pr perform routine maintenance on these machines, 
it's not an issue. To, uh, these liners will last quite a bit of time. Um, that moves us into our actual MIG gun. This is our trigger. This is what uh, puts the electricity into the electrode, sends it out, also activates our drive roller assembly inside of the machine here. Then we have, this is our nozzle. This is what uh, directs our shielding gas over the weld puddle so we can protect that weld puddle from the atmosphere uh, so that we don't have any discontinuities. The other two pieces on this, we have our contact tip and then we have our gas diffuser. Both of these uh, are considered consumables. Um, they will, I can take these off, put them back on. The contact tip, obviously, this is where our electricity is being transferred into our um, electrode, which is our, our hard wire there. These wear out fairly quickly. Uh, gas diffusers, uh, the, the lifespan of a gas diffuser is much longer, but it is still something that will need to be replaced. And then obviously a, a nozzle. These get a lot of wear and tear. You're using your welpers or your MIG welding pliers to get in here and clean spatter quite a bit. There's a lot of heat, um, so these can get replaced quite a bit as well. So that brings us to the inside of the machine. Obviously this is our spool of wire. This is 035 in diameter. This machine we can run 023, 030, 035, or 045. That's a diameter of wire. Right now I have an 035 hard wire. And when I say hard wire, uh, there's going to be flux core wire, which is a, uh, a wire that has, uh, an, it has a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A flux over the, over the top of the wire that melts off to create a slag, uh, very similar to a stick welding electrode. How we, how, we able, how we are able to get this uh, hard wire through our machine is our drive roller assembly. There are push-pull systems and there are simply uh, push systems. This is going to be a, uh, or, or pull systems. This is going to pull my wire through. If I was using uh, aluminum, I would have a push-pull system because I would want my gun as well to be uh, pulling at the same time or pushing at the same time because it's a lot softer of a wire and you don't want it to bind up inside of your cable or your whip. This here is my tensioner. This is what gives my drive rollers tension on my wire to be able to get it to uh, run smoothly into the whip. This is a drive roller. They have all kinds of different sizes uh, and the grooves are different. These are just a normal V groove drive roller for hard wire. We have uh, where these will sandwich together, there's U grooves and there's also a flux curl, which is a V knurled. And that's where there actually be kind of like some uh, teeth inside of those grooves to grab a hold of that, uh, that flux core wire, that dual shield wire to, to get it to run through the machine. These, these pop on here. And then they lock into place by turning this, it's on both sides. Next thing we see is, you can see here, that's part of my liner coming out of my whip. If I was to unscrew this, I could pull my entire whip out if I needed to replace the liner. Um, if I was transporting it for some reason, I didn't want to have my, my cable and my whip wrapped around the front of the machine, I could pull this whole thing out by, by loosening up this, this uh, adjustment right here. This is also our shielding gas is fed into the machine through this hose. It comes into the back, goes through the machine, and then it actually comes into our cable and then is routed to our gun coming out of our nozzle uh, through a connection inside of here. So you need to make sure when you're putting these together that our whip gets in there seated uh, perfectly so we don't lose any gas. If we lose gas, we're gonna have uh, issues with our weld, most namely uh, porosity is the first thing that shows up when you lose shielding gas. This is where our power is coming into our drive roller assembly that is getting transferred into our hard wire and our contact tip to be able to uh, create that arc that is giving us the heat to melt the workpiece and then add filler metal to it. Right now I have this set up for uh, direct current electrode positive or DCEP and that is when my drive roller assembly is, is hooked up to my positive terminal and my ground is hooked up to my negative uh, terminal. This is what you're going to run on all hard wires and if you're running a dual shield flux core, you're running a flux core wire, but you're using a shielding gas, you're gonna run that 
DC electrode positive. When you would switch this to DC electrode negative is if you're using a flux cord wire without any shielding gas, that's when you would switch this to, uh, to the DC electrode negative. But for the most part, these machines are always gonna be DC electrode positive. Um, and then again, this is how I get my tension from my drive rollers. On, I got my, uh, my wire guide that, that feeds my wire into my whip. My cable comes out. I talked about the ground that's hooked up to my negative port there, my negative terminal. This is a medium duty uh, ground. Where you're welding on, this is the first thing that needs to get connected. This is what connects our power to make that loop. This thing's gonna be energized. I got power coming from the power, power line into the breaker box in my house, running into the, my, my wall outlet with my 210 into the machine, coming through, and there's gonna be a loop. This connects that loop. That, that gap that we have from the end of our wire, or end of our contact tip to our workpiece, that is where we have, we call that the air gap. That is what caught the, the that's where our electricity is trying to complete that circuit. Um, that little bit of an air gap creates resistance. That resistance is what creates this amount of heat that we need to melt steel to then add our filler metal into that puddle. So we have to be able to have our ground connected so we have that circuit going. That moves us to the front of the machine. This is our control cable. Uh, another industry slang for this is going to be called a pigtail. That's what most people call them. And what this does is this just connects our cable and our gun to the machine and to the trigger. We have to have this connected so that way when we hit the trigger on our gun, our wire speed, everything that we've set on the machine transfers and goes into that gun. This being a um, Miller Matic 212 auto set, it's a pretty nice newer machine. Uh, as long as I have 035 or 03, 030 wire that I'm using and I have 035 in there right now, all I have to do is put it on 035 and then I have all of these sizes or thicknesses of material. Uh, and as long as, so if I'm using quarter inch, as long as I'm in this quarter inch range, that's all I have to do. Pull the trigger, there's obviously gonna be some fine tuning that need to be done in between there. Um, but it's very, very user friendly and easy. If we didn't have this set up, all machines are going to come with a cabinet like this that's going to have uh, more user-friendly kind of uh, instructions on how this machine works. It's gonna give you ideas of how all this, all this works. It's gonna give you an idea of all of the parts and consumables, sizes, part numbers, so you can replace those directly from the manufacturer of this type of machine. Um, and they're all gonna have this. This is going to tell us, uh, this is what size of wire we're using. This is our shielding gas. This is going to be what kind of wire we're using. It's electrode tight. And then this is the material that we're using, whether it be stainless, stainless steel, aluminum. For instance, for here, I am using, uh, this is just mild steel. This is an ER70S-6 uh, hard wire. I'm using 75-25 uh, mix. That tells me that their recommended setting is that 25 cubic feet per hour that I have mine set at. So then I go over to here, I have my three different wire sizes that this machine is, is the most adept to uh, run. And so the 035 is what I have in there now. And so this is the material thickness, 3 8 quarter, 3 16 8 inch, 4, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 22 gauge. So this is going to give me settings and wire speed that they would want. So if I was welding on 3 8 with this setup and I didn't have the auto set, I would want to be at 7.5 on my voltage so right about here, and then 75 on my wire speed, which is right about there. Now these are just kind of baseline recommendations for a flat or a horizontal position only. Obviously when you move to a vertical or an overhead position, you're going to have to adjust these accordingly. Uh, you're gonna be fighting gravity at, at that point, so most likely you're gonna to wanna to turn everything down a little bit. Um, so whenever you set something up here, it's wise to get a practice piece and then kind of fine tune it from these settings. All machines are gonna have this uh, with them to give you an idea of where to get started. Um, let's see. I'm gonna put this back over. So again, now, if I was gonna start this machine up, power switch, they're all gonna be a little bit different, but this is straight. My power is on. Now this is when I would wanna make sure that I have my cubic feet per hour of my shielding gas set. So I'm going to open my 
cylinder of shielding gas. I'm able to look at my high pressure gauge and I'm still pretty good up there. A lot, you know, you'd have to weld quite a bit to drain this gas out and I don't do enough in my garage. So I've got quite a bit of gas left. And again, this is where I was saying I could set my CFH. So I have to pull the trigger and I can see that, see that, uh, that needle pin back and forth. And so if I back off, either way I can turn it up. So now we have our wire coming out, uh, welpers here. That's why they're such a great tool. These things, you can use this to get inside perfectly. These also parts, this is perfect for our contact tip. This is perfect for our gas diffuser. Um, this, lost the nozzle. There it is. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> uh, after welding a lot, if you have to get this cleaned off, these are gonna be super hot. So you're not gonna wanna take a glove or just grab it with your bare hand. That's when another piece of these welding pliers, this bottom part gets over there perfectly. And then you can use it to pop those off. Uh, one way to know the tensioning that you want is you want the wire, you wanna be able to pinch your wire coming out with, a, with quite a bit of tension and you want it to be able to feed through. If you can stop it with that force of your thumb and, and index finger, then you uh, don't have your tension on your dry rollers enough. You want it to have that tension to push it through. So in a nutshell, very quickly, uh, that was kind of a rundown of a basic MIG machine. Hopefully this will, uh, will help out as you're uh, sitting at home under this uh, nationwide stay at home order that we're all dealing with. Uh, I'm gonna do another uh, another video soon uh, showing just fillet welds and T-joints in 1F through 4F positions. Uh, so until then, thank you.